frequently asked questions on failure to thrive in childhood. What is the definition of failure to thrive? Failure to thrive or FTC is a term used to describe inadequate growth or the inability to maintain growth, usually in early childhood. It is a sign of undernutrition. How is FTT diagnosed? A combination of anthropometric criteria, rather than one criterion, should be used to more accurately identify children at risk of FTT. A weight for age that falls below the 5th percentile or a weight deceleration that crosses two major percentile lines are commonly used. What are the causes of FTT? Inadequate caloric intake is the most common etiology seen in primary care settings. In infants younger than 8 weeks, problems with feeding for example poor sucking and swallowing, and breastfeeding difficulties are prominent. For older infants, difficulty transitioning to solid foods, insufficient breast milk or formula consumption, excessive juice consumption, and parental avoidance of high-calorie foods often lead to FTT. Family factors can contribute to inadequate caloric intake at any age. These include mental health disorders, inadequate nutritional knowledge, and financial difficulties. Poverty is the greatest single risk factor for FTT in developed and developing countries. Importantly, child neglect or abuse must be considered. Inadequate caloric absorption includes disorders causing frequent emesis for example metabolic disorders, food insensitivities, or malabsorption for example celiac disease, chronic diarrhea, protein losing enteropathy. Excessive caloric expenditure usually occurs in the setting of a chronic condition, such as congenital heart disease, chronic pulmonary disease, or hypothyroidism. In these instances, FTT often develops during the first eight weeks of life. What is the diagnostic evaluation for FTT? An accurate, detailed account of a child's eating habits, caloric intake, and parent-child interactions should be obtained as a key step in determining the etiology of FTT. Taking a psychosocial history is essential for detecting maternal or patient depression, or identifying concerns about the caregiver's intellectual abilities or social circumstances. Finally, a review of systems that elicits recurrent infections, respiratory symptoms, or vomiting or diarrhea, with or without food triggers may point to a non-behavioral cause. Is there a role for laboratory testing? Routine laboratory testing identifies a cause of FTT in less than 1% of children and is not generally recommended. What are the red flags suggesting medical causes of FTT? Cardiac findings suggesting congenital heart disease or heart failure. Developmental delay. Dysmorphic features. Failure to gain weight despite adequate caloric intake. Organomegaly or lymphadenopathy. Recurrent or severe respiratory, mucocutaneous, or urinary infection. Recurrent vomiting, diarrhea, or dehydration. What is the treatment for FTT? If a diagnosis of FTT is made and no medical conditions are suggested on examination, Appropriate guidance for catch-up growth should be made. Age-appropriate nutritional counseling should be provided to parents. For parents of breastfed infants, recommending breastfeeding more often, ensuring lactation support, or discussing formula supplementation until catch-up growth is achieved may be helpful. Parents of formula-fed infants may be instructed on how to make energy-dense formula by concentrating the ratio of formula to water during periods of catch-up growth. Toddlers should avoid excessive juice or milk consumption because this can interfere with proper nutrition. Nutritional supplements may be given until catch-up growth is achieved. During a period of catch-up growth. Parents may also be instructed to provide calorie-dense foods by adding rice cereal to foods for toddlers, or adding gravies, cream sauces, or butter to foods for older children or adolescents. Close follow-up should be performed in the physician's office, including evaluation of height, or length, and weight.
Multidisciplinary interventions, including home nursing visits, should be considered to improve weight gain, parent-child relationships, and cognitive development. If a disease or medical condition is identified on history, physical examination, or additional testing, the correct approach will vary depending on the condition. Appropriate management may include instituting specific treatment of the condition, or seeking consultation from a subspecialist or other healthcare professional for further evaluation and management recommendations. What are the outcomes of FTT? There is consensus that severe, prolonged malnutrition, which is common in developing countries, can negatively affect a child's future growth and cognitive development. Low birth weight preterm infants who develop FTT have also demonstrated long-term developmental effects. It is unclear from current studies if normal birth weight infants who develop FTT and then recover have similar long-term consequences. Audio Jungle Audio Jungle